The views or opinions expressed on Ann Arbor Inclusive do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the City of Ann Arbor and the Commission on Disability Issues. For more information about the Ann Arbor Commission on Disability Issues, please visit a2gov.org slash disability resources. Hello everyone and welcome to Ann Arbor Inclusive. I'm Zach Damon. We have a wonderful show for you today as NWBA player Paul Schulte joins us live at Chrysler Center. So first of all, uh, I want to thank you for being on the show. I mean, this is great. Uh, Paul, you've just done so much, uh, you know, throughout your career and of course throughout your life. And, you know, I was fascinated when I was doing some research about you because you began playing wheelchair basketball at age 14. And I really would like to know, what was it originally that fascinated you about the sport? Well, uh, thanks. first off, thanks for having me. Thanks sure. for having me on. It's, sure. it's great to be here each year and it's awesome to be on the campus and, 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 in, and in Ann Arbor. Um, so I guess what I would say is that, uh, you know, what fascinated me about wheelchair basketball at first, you actually have to take a step back and say when I was first invited to play, I, I turned it down. I had, a, I had a little bit of a negative stereotype about adaptive sports and I, I, didn't, think, I didn't think it was going to be very athletic and I didn't think it was going to be very competitive. Hmm. And so I turned down my first opportunities to experience it and then I uh, finally, um, finally accepted an invitation to attend a men's wheelchair basketball practice here in Ann Arbor. And when I came in, uh, there were a few players right off the bat that kind of shattered the stereotypes that I had in my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, one was a double amputee named Chris Lenzo, well known around this area. And he, he could do a cartwheel with his chair strapped to him. He could hit three pointers. He could play against able bodies. He was so fast. Mm -hmm. And so right off the bat meeting him, I was like, wow, this is going to be way different than I thought. And then I fell in love with the sport mm -hmm. just of how fast it is uh, amongst the elite players and the opportunities that lie within the sport mm -hmm. captivated me. So I had the, my, in a sense, uh, I got hurt with a spinal cord injury when I was 10 and some of the dreams that I had for myself were seemed out of reach, sure. but uh, I was very blessed to have the opportunity to still get recruited. Yeah. You know, I, I had the experience of being recruited to a college program I, and I had the, the experience of being a, a college athlete and then eventually traveling around the world. So the sport has given a lot to me. Well, and that's amazing, and you, I think you've given a lot back to the sport, and we'll touch on that in a moment. But an interesting fact about you, too, is that you were born here in Ann Arbor. And that's you, right. And you sort of grew up in this city. And for those that have never been to Ann Arbor, visited Ann Arbor, but they've heard of the name, know of the city, why, why should people come visit Ann Arbor? There is a, there's a, there's a, there's a culture and a history here that's combined with kind of a fresh perspective on what's possible. I guess if I tried to summarize what I, what I feel about Ann Arbor, that's, that's what I feel. I'm always excited to come here because sure. I know there's always gonna be an opportunity to try a new restaurant or yeah, a different yeah. food. And then at the heart of it is the University of Michigan and everything that is the rich tradition that goes along with this university. And so that's a pretty, that's a pretty magnetic combo yeah, sure. to, to draw people here. Definitely. And you know, you talked early in your earlier response about initially when you were getting involved as a youth in wheelchair basketball, how you really didn't think it would be competitive. You know, you really thought it wouldn't be something that you'd be interested in. But you have a big passion now about bringing youth into the sport of wheelchair basketball. Sure. So can you talk about why that's important to you? You know, for me as a young athlete, I was, you know, basketball sport was the, that was like the candy. Like that was the candy that got me here. Once I realized that it was everything that I wanted in, in, in able body sports before I got hurt, then it was like the candy that got me here. And along the way, all the things that I picked up, I met positive role models that had, uh, that had spouses, had children, had jobs, had, you know, uh, played great athletics. They were doing all the things that, that people had told me was possible in my life, but until I saw real life examples sure. of people living the future that I wanted to live, mm -hmm. then all of the black and white advice, good black and white advice I had received kind of went into full color and I was like, now I can see yeah. the path that I wanted. And my grades went up, my, my wow. health went up, and all aspects of my life got better from being involved in something like this. And so that's what I really hope for future generations is, yeah, that 
that with modern technology of being able to be <laughs> had I had I had YouTube and saw sure. you know these athletes right off the bat would I have been more you know receptive to it maybe sure um, and so it's great to be involved with the outreaches and the Paralympic movement these days that's great but what do you say to you know a lot of the youth right now that are sort of looking for a sport uh, and they're in a chair but they don't really know much about wheelchair basketball why should they get involved well wheelchair basketball is a great sport because there's there's lots of teams throughout the country and there's a lot of opportunity to to travel and to go experience different places um, also what I like about wheelchair basketball a lot is that it is it's been integrated into uh, around 10 different colleges around really? the country wow. yep everywhere from University of Alabama to University of Illinois and some of the biggest colleges that have teams and so I, I guess the influence that it that it provided for me to get my education to go on and graduate from college and to live my life the way I wanted to live it was great sure I would also say that if basketball is not your thing, that's okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, I, I've had wonderful people in my life that were athletes and then wonderful people that pursued whatever they were most passionate about. Mm. And so um, sometimes going through some true adversity in your life, mm. something like a debilitating injury or disease, right. can have a really, really profound impact on you, it can be really hard. Mm -hmm. And when the time is right for you to reconnect with something you're passionate about right. and let it bring you know, some, some joy into your life, mm -hmm. uh, something that you can work hard on and get better at, then, sure. then that's a great thing to be part of, especially when it brings in good role models that encourage you and, 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 and provide positive feedback. Oh, definitely. And I mean, I think, you know, for the youth out there watching this, you know, hopefully they can get involved uh, in some sort of sport. Well, you know, yeah. whether it's wheelchair basketball or whether it's any other sport. And, There's and, a lot of them these days. Yeah. And, and be able to, you know, gain the same sort of things that you gained as a youngster, you know, yeah. playing the sport. And, you know, it was interesting. You talked about the schools that have a scholarship wheelchair basketball program. I mean, would you like Michigan to have that in the future? Oh, wow. Well. Well, sure. I mean, <laughs> the, the the school itself has so many things to offer, sure. and I think there are I think there are several universities throughout the country that look at it and go, yeah, that would, when the right opportunity comes along for us to have something like that, we want to have something like that because yeah. it's a, it, it's it's something to take pride in, and sure. the athletes that come, uh, and come through the program are are phenomenal. They're yeah. they're incredible individuals and. So yes, in short, I think that would be absolutely phenomenal for the University of Michigan to have it. And I believe that when the time is right and circumstances are set, that, that someday they will. Wonderful. Now, an interesting fact about you too, you recently were in Rio and you were a commentator for the wheelchair basketball teams uh, in Rio. So talk about that experience. What was that like and how was it? Well, I, uh, so I was involved with the national team for 18 years and I was very fortunate to be able to uh, make my first team when I was 18. Uh, the group that I first met here in Ann Arbor helped teach me the game, helped me work really hard. And uh, I first made the team when I was 18. And then in January of this year, 2016, I retired as an athlete. Okay. So I had 18 years in on the national team and uh, it, was a, it was a long, difficult decision, but when I made it, I feel good about it. I feel like it's the right decision for, uh, for me and my family. And then I got an email a couple weeks after from NBC saying, would you be interested in doing color commentary of the Paralympics? <laughs> That's great. And I was like, holy cow, that makes me nervous just thinking about it. Yeah. But, uh, but I went, I auditioned, uh, they provided some training for me to learn a little bit more how to do it. And, sure. then, I, and, then, I, and then I studied a bunch leading up to the Paralympics and, and had a wonderful time. Both the men's and women's team both won gold, uh, completing actually Olympic and Paralympic now. Wow. The men's able-bodied Olympians, yep. women Olymp able-bodied Olympians, and then both of the wheelchair teams all won gold. So it's the first time in history that, is that amazing. gold medals were run all around. And it was really neat to have a small part to play in it. That's right. Go USA. Yes. You know, that is awesome. That is amazing. So, so, I mean, will you continue to do uh, some broadcasting? Is that sort of in your future? You know what? I, I never thought about it before, but I had a, I had a great time doing it. Yeah. And I enjoy the athletes so much in the Paralympic movement. It was, a, it was a huge honor to be able to try my best to convey sure. my excitement and my passion for sure. those athletes and what they were accomplishing. So if I got to ask to do it again, I, I, I think I'd happily say yes. Yeah. Wow, that's great. And I mean, congratulations on that opportunity. Thank uh, you. That's amazing. And so you kind of answered the other question that I had for you in your earlier response. You said you, you retired this year. And of course, I was going to talk about how, you know, you were a five-time MVP uh, in the National Wheelchair Basketball Association. You've won four championships uh, as a player. 
uh, with the Dallas uh, Mavericks and that team. Yeah. And so can you talk about in, in your career, because you've done so much, I mean, you've won medals overseas, you've won gold medals, you've won bronze with the U.S. at the Paralympics. So can you single out one moment to you that really sticks out as the best moment? Ooh, that's a really good question. Uh, there's a couple different ones. I certainly had a, I, and, I'll, and I'll try to be brief and, sure. and summarize those, but in yeah. the year 2000, I was a young player on the team and uh, I, got, I got the ball at half court with kind of the clock running out and I was able to hit a three pointer that, that, uh, that helped win the game and secure the bronze medal that year. And that was certainly like a, wow, such a, a highlight moment, such an exciting thing to celebrate with your team like that. And then I think it uh, comes kind of full circle back to London in 2012 you know, having my wife and my son there yeah. and, uh, and having a big, strong effort at the end of the Paralympics to, to bring home a bronze and be able to share that with them was, was, was magic. That's it was absolute great. magic to be able to have them in London. So those two, those two stick out a lot to me. And then, and then I guess I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, you know, hearing your country's national anthem after you've sacrificed so much and worked so hard to represent your country, that, that, that certainly gets your heart pounding like nothing else. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. Man, that's, that's amazing. So, uh, last couple questions for you. Sure. Uh, so, number one, uh, talk about uh, sort of now what your plan is, uh, you know, after basketball. Uh, and then also, uh, if you can, do you have any words of wisdom for, you know, future athletes out there? And, and really, in your mind, you know, what is sort of the recipe for that success? Sure. Sure. Well, I think, uh, you know, those closest to me have encouraged me to, uh, to continue to, to do what I'm passionate about. So while I'm not a member of the national team and actively trying to uh, make the next Paralympics, I'll continue to play. So I'll continue to play for, uh, I'll be playing for the Miami Heat Wheels, okay. uh, the team affiliated with the NBA Miami Heat. Sure. And uh, we'll play some, play some tournaments this year. Cool. And I, I enjoy meeting the next generation. And so uh, being able to, to play with them, pass along any tips or bits of experience sure. is, uh, is, is a joy to me. Um, I work for, uh, for Invicare Top End as, a, as an engineer. Sure. And so continuing to, to design and, um, and work with athletes is a great joy of mine as well. And then, uh, and then attending my son's, uh, my son's BMX races and being with my family is, is certainly what I love. So I think that as far as you know, advice that I have, um, you know, to me, I've, I've said it before and I still feel it as strongly as I, as I did then, that if I could go back and whisper over my own shoulder when I was 10 years old, that uh, if I had an opportunity to whisper over my own shoulder, I would say every dream you ever had can still come true. Mm. And, uh, and I, I feel passionate about that because I know how true that was. Sure. And so um, I would say that, hey, don't, don't ever be discouraged by the road that's right in front of you or... Uh, continue to stay close to people that are that are that you love the most. Yeah. Um, find the things that you're most passionate about. Set yourself a goal, and then and then go chase it and get it because it's possible. Okay. Wonderful. And really quick, if we can, just say why the Army Navy wheelchair basketball game for you is something that you mark on your calendar, and why people should come next year. Well, I I enjoy this game a lot. It's uh, it has some it has some very good organizers that have great hearts and they do it for the right reason. And then the University of Michigan has, uh, has gotten behind it and given it a home here at Chrysler Arena. And it's, it's a privilege. It's a privilege to be here to, uh, to celebrate Disability Awareness Month and do it with some of our, uh, our, our servicemen and women that, uh, that sacrifice so much for our country. So it's a, it's a thrill to be part of it. It's a great people part of it. And, and we do our best to put on a good show each year. There we go. Well, good luck today. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Well, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I'd like to thank Paul for joining us and hope you enjoyed the program. Be sure to tune in to Ann Arbor Inclusive next month. And as always, stay awesome, Ann Arbor.